Hi, I'm John the Engineer, and I hope this video about how Fukushima fallout killed all your fish, all the birds are going to be dead, no reproduction, frogs are gone, so I hope to scare the shit out of you, and I hope that by the end of this video, you've been cheered up. Have your fish died recently? I was speaking to a buddy recently, and I... 3,000 miles away and said, hey, have all your fish died? He went, yeah, how'd you know? I said, think about it, Fukushima. Now, right after Fukushima, there were all these reports, April 7th, 2011, help, there are a bunch of dead fish in my pond. Um, April 20th, new pond, all my fish are dying. And May 20, May 14th, uh, well-established pond missing fish and frogs. And finally, fish kill, advice needed, May 27th. Now, this is one great book, Deadly Deceit, ISBN 0941423565. And I did a whole video on it at my site, in my KOTP, King of the Poppers, index at my site. And in it... He basically took advantage of all the mortality statistics available in the United States after Chernobyl and around nuclear power plants. Did a statistical analysis. Came up with some fascinating conclusions. And he pointed out that fallout radiation is far different from background and x-ray radiation because it gets in you much, much closer and that's a squared function of the damage and does a lot of harm and especially to babies and oldsters. Now, the most interesting thing of all is that after Chernobyl, which is like a mini blast, okay, um, compared to Fukushima, which is a mini blast compared to if Hangford went off. So, still, after Chernobyl, uh, when the plume went over, they reported over half loss of reproduction of birds in one sanctuary. Okay, so, sure, the government may have turned off the fallout detectors before the uh, plume hit, but they didn't turn off the bird and the fish detectors. And so, there's been a huge loss in reproductive capacity from Chernobyl. And I would bet you're not going to see any chicks this year, but we know we don't see any fish. And after Chernobyl, they were still fish living. So, I think, unless there were some kills there, too. But nevertheless, the point is, a pond which receives rain, which is where the nuclear fallout comes down, that's why milk and cheese are so bad, because the cows eat it off the ground, and it gets passed in the milk, and then kills the babies. So, and who are most susceptible, because, you know, having, you know, a piece of plutonium hanging around, blowing away a piece of a 60-cell organism, is a lot more damaging than a 60,000-cell organism. Get it? So that's why they pick off the, you know, the you know, fetuses and the babies first. And the oldsters, too, who are weakened by other things. So, half baby deaths. And now, after they shut off the fallout detectors in B.C., there were a triple baby death. And we don't know how many actual fetuses got killed. But uh, we certainly know that half the chicks who came out of their shells got zapped. So... That explains for three times more baby deaths. So this is really scary stuff, and it explains the difference between the danger of fallout radiation from a blast and X-ray and background radiation they always compare it to. Now, fish kill is obvious. There's something happening here. Just call your friends if you don't believe me and say, you got a pond? And they're like, yeah, I fish all dead? Yeah, why? Well, that's because, what do you think? Well, here's why. The plutonium is going to gather at the bottom of the pond. And eventually, nothing can live in the pond. Just like it'll, you know, gather in the bottom of your swimming pool. Until eventually, nothing can live in your swimming pool. Get the idea? So, you can always get down there and try and scrape off the plutonium and then put in fresh water. But, I mean, who wants to go scraping plutonium, right? So, I don't know if I'd be using my swimming pool too much either recently. But... That's probably why the fish are dying, because water is a major element they live in. We might only process a couple of liters a day of water, but these guys are having it going through their gills by the tons and getting all the fallout exposure that we only get in a minor amount. Now, 
in my earlier videos when I was talking about Fukushima, I explained ways of countering the and binding with the nuclear elements before they get in you from your water, how to treat your water, and some ideas of how to cut back on your use of water, your intake of water, because the less nuclear water you take in, the less, less nuclear fallout you have to deal with. So those are at my video. Oh, wow. 310 minute videos, 60 hours. Sorry, I got to go watch Dancing with the Stars. Anyway, here's the most danger now. Now, of course, when a nuclear plant goes, that's a major explosion. But there are other triggers. For instance, um, you cut power to the pumps, they explode. So at every station, a vulnerable and probably most vulnerable point is pump and if the pump stops working no more cooling heats up blows up there's a storage tank takes it with it and it's really bad news so that's it if the pumps go down then the nuclear reactors explode so uh you know i mean terrorism in the pump a lightning bolt in the pumps or a tsunami in the pumps or uh you know anything that cuts power to the pumps is the trigger to nuclear catastrophe couple of hours later fair enough so now here's a really close call happened in Panica Kentucky May 22nd I don't know how many people reported it probably just this one place echo watch by Jeffrey C and he's reported the disasters about to strike in Western Kentucky a full-blown nuclear catastrophe involving hundreds of tons of enriched uranium now remember a bomb's got pounds of tons, okay, taking out Hiroshima and stuff like that. And these uh, reactors have hundreds of tons, but keep in mind that Hancock has, Hanford has 100, 200,000 tons. A kilo times worse, 1,000 times worse, Hanford. It's always the mega blast when we talk about danger, all right? But here's a little one, okay, I mean, just another Fukushima. And uh, full-blown nuclear catastrophe, though. And if it does take off, well, it'll start a cascade. The next nuclear reactor down the road, uh, when all the people are dead and there's no more pumps working, that one will blow and it'll blow and it'll be a cascade across the developed world, right? That's how that would work. So, but this nuke calamity will be no fluke. It's been programmed. All right, a bug in the software. Here it is, the most failed American experiment. Main power to the gaseous diffusion uranium plant at Paddock, Kentucky will be cut midnight. Okay, so this software glitch, this problem in the system is going to cut power to the pumps at midnight. Now, worse, it tells you when. On May 31st. Now, it's after that now, so obviously they must have found a way to trick it to put it off to December 31st or something. But it hasn't blown yet, but Cut to the power, any nuclear reactor, anywhere, all vulnerable at that power source. Get it? All right. All right. Let's say there's a uh, global grid collapse, you know, a solar flare, magne you know, magnetic storm, and every coil on the planet and every motor and generator is fried. Well, what's going to happen? Quiet. No engines. No noise. And in a few hours, boom, 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 boom. Now... Uh, let's face it now, uh, Patica could go in six months if they managed to change the, the monthly clock on the thing and trick it. And so the bookies are laying 180 to 1 on your money if you want to bet on one of the days that it's going to blow and start to cascade. So I got August 31st. So on August the 30th, I'll be there going, waiting, waiting. And on the 31st, if I hear boom, 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 I win. Anyway. That's the real danger, a cut to the power source, and we averted a possible catastrophe at Panica for a while. Now, that's a dinky, dinky reactor compared to Hanford, which we now have to talk about. Uh, May, the May the 9th, a month ago, or, U.S. nuclear cleanup site may be too dangerous. Plutonium could congregate to trigger nuclear chain reaction. Problems at Hanford, this is like a thousand times more stored material than Patica. A showstopper. Is that? <laughs> a kilo showstopper, we might call it, right? If Patica would be a nuclear catastrophe, this must be a kilo showstopper. The major snag in the form of potential reactions 
are explosions, and there are six more storage tanks out of 177 currently leaking. That's further ramped up the pressure for resolution. Hey, we got 3% of our nuclear fuel uh, stored dump tanks leaking. Maybe we should fix them. Ramp the pressure. No money. Anyway, uh, the plutonium could blow, and these problems are called a showstopper. So I, I told you that in my last video. Anyway, finally, May 23rd. Incipient collapse of radioactive waste tanks possible at U.S. nuclear site. And again, it's back to Hanford with their leaking tanks. Nuclear expert uh, Robert Alvarez says these tanks are decades old. You know, most built in the 40s and 60s. Over a third have leaked. Structural integrity leaves much to be desired. And it could go into a state of incipient collapse. Now, incipient neat word means at any moment. You know what I mean? Hey, let's bet on it. So, that is the problem with the mega blow. Incipient collapse of the mega blow. Now, let's look at the funding details of the nuclear waste cleanup delayed and billions over budget. June 19th. This was like a couple of days ago. Seems that they originally budgeted $4 billion for the cleanup. And they were now over budget to 13 and they're spending $2 billion a year and cutting corners as best they can. Now, we have to put things in comparison. Uh, the financial industry were saved. That financial catastrophe was averted by the Fed with $15,000 billion, leaving two to fix Hanford. Get the difference? Two for Hanford, 15000 for the banks. Now, if you reverse that, You'd have 7,500 more resources on nuclear and less on the banks. Now, that seems interesting and funny, but here's the good news. If they can come up with 15,000 billion to save the banks, they can come up with 15,000 billion to save us from nuclear. And if we could throw 7,500 times more resources at burying nuclear, well, let's say that right now, 40 years to bury Hanford, that's 500 months, right? Well, that means we could have it buried in a month or two. That's because we can't turn to full power right away, take a little while to get organized. But a couple of months, it's built if we throw 7,000 times the resources at the problem that are presently devoted to it, right? So, geez, if we could fix money, we could do that, probably have it buried in a couple of months, save ourselves. So... Now, back to the pagica. What happens at the end of the year? Here it is. We're going to read it one more time because power failure to the pumps is the big catastrophe. So, the most failed American experiment, main power to the gargantuan gaseous diffusion uranium plant at Pagica, Kentucky, will be cut at midnight, May 31st, now deferred, just nine days from now. Cut because... USEC has terminated its power contract with TVA, the power company, as of that time. And because the Department of Energy can't pick up the bill. A full-blown nuclear catastrophe could actually occur if the nuclear reactor company couldn't pay their bill. And this possible threat of the nuclear reactor companies running out of money to pay their bills, which would shut the power to their pumps, is threatening every nuclear power station in the country with debts, right? I mean, all the bankers got to do is foreclose and force the issue, and the power's cut to the pumps, and boom, they can hurt. That's holding it over our heads. So anyway, there it is, the financial problem. So the Argentine solution I'm proposing is what they used. They printed a bond you can use for hydro taxes, medical, and licenses. And they paid all their employees and workers to do that. And they hired more. Nobody unemployed when there's enough bonds to pay everybody. And we could actually do the same thing to pay the nuclear industry to bury the threat. And maybe have it done in a couple of months. Throwing thousands of times the resources now allocated to this lesser threat than the 15,000 billion allocated to the greater banking threat. <laughs> so anyway... Alex Jones, the last one I have to read for you. I have one here from, where is it, John? Uh, 
Ah, oh, where is it? Anyway, it tells about the one in St. Louis, I bet. Here it is. Explosion possible near St. Louis. That's a lot closer to you, Alex Jones, and Hanford. So you may not be too worried about Hanford, but what about St. Louis? So explosion possible near St. Louis area nuclear site. Now, this isn't going to be from power cuts by the power company. And this isn't going to be an oops in the nuclear room. This is an underground fire threatening to cut the power to the pumps. Imagine that. So, this is a lot closer to Alex Jones in Texas than Hanford was. So, wake up, Alex Jones. I mean, anybody else come up with a Paul Revere solution to save the planet better than funding the burial of nuclear? So, get on with it. Give me the prize so we can make the video go viral. And you can find it. Just look for Paul Revere's Argentine solution. And you'll get my video explaining how it could all work. And uh, let it go viral so that the unions demand how to be paid and we can fund thousands of times the resources to bury the threat. So, now, get back to dancing with the stars or turn off your boob tube because the hypnos... What good's another rerun of, you, you know, uh, Law and Order, you know, or whatever, even the news. It's all propaganda, bullshit lies. May as well turn it off for a week and start screaming, ah, you know, I mean, you, you worried of FEMA, Alex? Ah, you worried about aspartame? Ah, you worried about the FDA problems, the EPA problems? All the threats they're putting in our food and they're putting in our air and terrorists? Ah, putting new chains on us, police state? Ah, hey, nuclear? Ah! So, for those people who want to join me in screaming that nuclear has got to be buried, you got one week to convince Alex Jones to pick the Argentine solution as the Paul Revere winning contest entry and make that go viral. And if the world's workers can be paid with bonds to bury nuclear, we have our best chance, best odds to win. And if not, well, geez, after the contest over, I'll probably sit back and <laughs> pick another day after August 31st, right? Bye.